Uh, and now, without further ado, Heather Flowers, and I go back a, a ton of years, I don't know, man. And in some way, she recycled like a good penny, you know, like the good penny we pick up at. And, 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 and really, and really, um, it's, yeah, she was a, a service coordinator in hands, right? And I don't know whether you want to talk at all about that, but it's, uh, you, I haven't seen you in years and years, and here she comes back again. So, so and I've been working for 15 years. She's probably, you were there, probably there for 10 years before that, too, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want to age her, but this is, this is really cool stuff. It's good to hear new stuff coming down the pike, you know? And, and, uh, and, and we thought, just when we thought Jerry wrote articles about magnets, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. So some stuff works and some stuff, but we know guys, for a medication or for a therapy like this, it's a lot of times time on the market, time on the market to see how many help people are really affects and works with their nose. But this is promising. So and that's what I hope she'll talk about. It's about depression, uh, schizophrenia. I was hoping Barbara Van Dyke would be here. She's supposed to be here, she didn't make it. But she, her son did really good with this stuff, and that's how we found out about her. So, Heather Flowers, Heather. Thank you, Jerry. 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 for having me this evening. I, I'm a very gentle, soft talker, so if you need me to talk louder, uh, please let me know. Uh, so as Joe was saying, uh, my name is Heather Flowers, and I have been in uh, the field of mental health as a provider for almost 27 years. Uh, I started my career at a nonprofit when we were doing SLAs, Supportive Living Arrangements, and I then uh, worked at NMHI when it was NMHI, and uh, started off as the housing coordinator there and then transitioned into doing uh, the housing job along with case coordination and then went from case coordination and then went from case coordination to doing the mental health court and being the first uh, case worker there that uh, worked with the courts on that uh, particular project. And it's been really exciting to watch the, the community embrace alternative sentencing programs. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to talk about a treatment called neurofeedback. Neurofeedback, and I'm often asked, uh, what's the difference between neurofeedback and biofeedback? Biofeedback is for most things that are below the neck, which would mostly be blood pressure, heart, relaxation. Um, and what we do is we train you to increase your body temperature, to lower your heart rate and your, your respirations, and then also to control your blood pressure. So those are all things that biofeedback can do. Neurofeedback, on the other hand, is everything from the neck up. And what it currently serves are most things neurological, such as seizures, migraines, um, addiction, I'm trying to, I might come up with some more as I go along. But it also works with a lot of the diagnoses or diagnoses that mental health puts, on, um, puts out. So a big one is anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, uh, schizoaffective, schizophrenia, uh, the uh, addiction again. And my history of it, the way I came about it, was back in, I think, 2003, I was in a, a really, really bad car accident. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And I had, oh. had a really bad head injury. Um, it was actually a, a, a TBI, a, a, a traumatic brain injury at the time. And what happened to me was that I got what I call hamster head, where the, the wheels were just spinning. And I could not turn it off. And so what I did, and, and this was um, in my brilliant thinking, what I did was I started to self-medicate so that I could get to sleep. And I chose alcohol as my technique of self-medication. So fast forward about three years down the track, and I've got my traumatic brain injury, and now I'm a full-fledged alcoholic, and I'm not doing very well. I'm extremely depressed and I'm super anxious because that's one of the byproducts of alcoholism. So what happened for me 
was that I found this treatment kind of by a divine intervention, so to speak. Uh, I had a friend here in town who wanted to become uh, certified in providing the treatment, and he needed a guinea pig. And so I was happy to be the guinea pig for him. And we worked together for several, I think it was just about a two-year time period. And in those two years, what happened for me was that my depression lifted, anxiety was completely put in remission, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. My traumatic brain injury, that hamster head that I had had, finally quieted. My sleep improved, and with my alcoholism, and I'll share that uh, I drank every day for three years in a row, without a break. And I went from drinking every day to none. I've never relapsed, which is very unique in addiction treatment. Most folks will relapse eight, eight nine times before they get a hold of the sobriety or the recovery program. And I'm, I've not had that experience. There was a research project that was done at the University of Santa Barbara on addiction treatment with the neurofeedback as the tool. And what they did is they treated 100 vets that had been diagnosed with the alcoholism, or with alcoholism. And they treated them with the treatment and let them all go, had them come back after a year. And after a year, only two out of the 100 had relapsed. And those are numbers that you can't get even from AA or any other 12-step program of recovery. So to, to say that it helps on that level is huge. Um, getting back to how I, again, how I found this. When I did this back uh, about 10 years ago in 04, 05, 05, 06, uh, the, the programs that were available for the consumer were, were pretty boring and painfully boring. And the assessment was painful as well. It, was, it took two days to assess what was going on in my brain. And having hamster head, it was really hard to sit for two days. So it was torture. <laughs> um, so, saying that, I made it through. Um, I lived to, to do the treatment. And although the treatment at the time was not terribly engaging or exciting, what I could tell was that it was making a huge difference in the way I thought, in the way I processed, and in the way I just handled life in general. Prior to doing the treatment, I would act and then do my thinking. And what the treatment has allowed me to do and what it's taught me is to think and then act. Or, not, and it, it regulates emotions in a really gentle way as well. And I left out actually, it treats PTSD. Um, and, and things will come to me. Sometimes when I, when I do public speaking, I get a little bit nervous. <laughs> and so it still will go, I have my, I'm older now, and so those little moments go zoom. Uh, but they'll come back, I hope so. Um, the things that it doesn't treat are things such as Parkinson's, Huntington's, um, pain. Oh, thank you. It does treat pain, and it treats it wonderfully. Um, my legs in the car wreck were shattered, and I had horrific pain. And doing the treatment helped it to be manageable, so that I could manage it without meds. So thank you for asking. Um, good question. So in my, in my experience with it, I did the treatment. Um, I think I took about 56 treatments to do. And after my 56th treatment, I knew that I was done. I intuitively knew that. And it just happened that the person I was working with at the time asked if I would consider returning to school getting the nursing classes that I needed to get underneath my belt and go and sit for the exam and then become a clinical neurofeedback, clin or I'm sorry, a clin 
clinical, a clinician of neurofeedback, there we go, a clinician of neurofeedback. There are three different types of uh, neurofeedback providers. There's a technician who doesn't require uh, anything over a high school education and um, a certain amount of hours. Then there's a clinician who requires college degrees and 3,000 hours. And then there's a professional, and they require a PhD, and I think a lot more hours. So I'm in that third, or I'm sorry, I'm in that middle category, the clinician. Um, because of my experience with working with Nevada Mental Health, and I've been here in, in the Reno Sparks area, and my, I think I, my family is about a fifth generation now, and I've maintained relationships with the physicians in town. So a lot of the physicians know me already, know the way I work, here she goes. And, and we work in, in concert. What was I gonna say? <laughs> uh -huh. So, okay, so putting that on the side. Um, and, and getting back to the neurofeedback. Some of the, the, the programs that I used, again, painfully boring, the, the programs that are available now are so state-of-the-art, uh, they're wonderful. Uh, they include things like writing CDUs in a CDU course, writing uh, your choice of a car on a uh, race course, and you can even choose your race course if you want it to be with snowfall, with water, volcanoes, um, there's also programs that fly different spaceships, and you get diamonds, and the coloring of it is just brilliant and gorgeous and bright. And all of those things are, are positive reinforcements that are built into the programs. So all the programs are built on a behavioral cognitive model. And with the brain, the brain gets it through operant conditioning. It just picks it up, and sometimes you know, people want to know exactly how it's done scientifically. And scientifically, I can tell you that what it'll do is if you don't have the neural pathways laid down, it will start routing new pathways for you. Now, in my nursing classes, I was taught that the brain stops developing around 26 years of age. But it's been my experience that the brain continues to, to grow if you use it. <laughs> So in my treatment and what I do with folks, I encourage um, people to get you know, good night's rest before we come or whatever to bring water with them and to treat it as if it was a workout. So what we're doing is we're working parts of the brain that aren't working efficiently or working to where they need to be. And then what we'll also do is we'll quiet parts of the brain that need to be quieted that are working too hard or that are working inefficiently. So a good example of that would be anxiety. Anxiety uh, is all part of one of the brain waves called beta. And a quick uh, education on the brain. You've got five major brain waves, and I'll tell you two of them in order from small to big. You've got delta, beta, alpha, beta, and gamma. For people that have a depressed problem, there's an issue between the ratio of alpha and theta. For someone who's got an anxiety issue, it's beta. For people that have sleep issues, pain issues, it's delta and gamma together. Um, for people that are coming in that need symptom improvement for such things as the bipolar and or uh, schizophrenia, we work on a site that's called your sensory motor rhythm which is dead, dead spot on your brain or part of your skull. And um, typically what that means is training to come within what has been considered uh, normal or average mean limits. And so the play, you, you play doing that. So you get to play video games with your brain. Um, the other, with working with children, um, the program has been approved for ADHD, um, obsessive-compulsive, oppositional-defiant, 
So it, it's a great tool for anybody who doesn't want to put their kids on medications. And there are several uh, child psychiatrists in town that will work in concert with me and, and they will also um, respect the desires of the parents. So if the parents don't want to put their little ones on meds right away, I'll be the, the treatment person. And, and typically, um, it's been my experience in my 10 years of now being a clinician that the treatment is a lifesaver for the little ones, and for the parents also. Because if you can imagine having a child who's peeing off the walls, but you're so afraid to put meds on them, that, uh, and, you, and I would assume that you put it in, in, in the thought that um, putting kids on those meds would be really frightening for parents, I think. Um, I don't have any kids, so um, that being said, it's been my experience and, and it's been my fortunate experience that while I work with adults, I've also worked with kids throughout my career and adolescents as well. And this works great for all age groups. What I'm, or what I, uh, is suggested is that they can start at about age six. And the reason for that is just so they can sit still a little bit. And then it goes to no end as far as the age limit goes. There's no age limit to the end of it. A little bit of history as to how this treatment was discovered, just to give it um, background for everybody. Back in the 60s, uh, there was a, a, a guy who was a Berkeley professor, and he was doing studies on kitty cats and neurofeedback. And what he was doing with the kitty cats is um, trying to train them, I'm not, I don't remember all of it, but trying to train them and putting electrodes on the brain. Unfortunately, you, at that time, you would do that and it would kill off the kitty cats. They wouldn't last very long. And at some period of his research, Berkeley pulled his funding and said, we're not gonna pay for this any longer. Thank you very much, have a nice life. And I, he, my understanding is he went away feeling kind of dejected and really kind of frustrated. But in short order, NASA gave him a call. And NASA had heard that he was doing these studies with the kitty cats, and they wondered if perhaps he could bring his kitty cats to NASA and help NASA. Because at the time, NASA was having a big problem exposing their astronauts to the jet fuel that was used in the rockets. And what would happen for these astronauts is they would have seizures. So the doctor came to NASA, worked with his, the uh, astronauts, and got the brain into a place where no seizures occurred again. These, yes? It's very really interesting because I, I have just been on a treatment what they call it, absentee seizures. Would something like that work for that? Yes. Yeah, it's, very, it's a very effective procedure control. And I'll, I'll explain as I go. Um, so it, the science was kind of born 